and you will see how when the, the, uh, the, 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 as he says, Negroes, right after the emancipation, were obliged to form a different labor movement, he said this is a blow against democracy. So this, we've forgotten this. We've now got uh, our idea of democracy is voting blocks. But uh, in fact, those who oppose us by race or gender make us undemocratic because de democracy has no ethnicity and no gender. It is one person, one vote, based not on ethnic solidarity, but judgment. The secret is an education that does not only lead to jobs. When Gramsci said, everyone is an intellectual, and this is quoted uh, ad absurdum, this is constantly quoted, just this little bit. When Gramsci said, everyone is an intellectual, he did not mean let's burn the schools. That remark, everyone is an intellectual, and I'll come back to it at the end, is empty when mouthed by overeducated people like myself. It is not a question of subject matter alone either, nor of gathering information. It is a question of making minds that will read the information right. That's much harder. It is a question of educating in such a way that the thinking of democracy and justice for everyone, rather than however justified self-interest, becomes habitual. Forming habits of mind, children's education, because that's when habits are formed. Marcel asked me a very good question, because I was talking about how we, my kind of person, it's not the colonials. Where I work, they've not seen white people. But my kind of person, for thousands of years, colonialism was day before yesterday. We have harmed them. And so the question that Marcella asked was, can't children learn, babies learn? Yes, they can. But they go back into houses where, in fact, the parents work according to the really awful way in which we have brought up the so-called untouchables, the so-called tribals, and so on. And this is not just in India, everywhere. There is a certain kind of class apartheid. But anyway, so, but habits of mind, children's education, that's where you begin to educate in this way. Just having information, it's just going round and round, preaching to the choir. The policymakers don't, in fact, care. Why should they? Thus, right to information alone, without the education work, can be bewildering and confusing. So the real question is, can we accept Gramsci when we are suffering and small businesses give financial independence and education leading to democratic judgment seems impossible? Can we accept him? Uh, you only want to bring the uh, thing pages, the notebook pages. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh, I didn't want to circulate them before. It's okay. All right. This, okay, the, um, can we accept Gramsci when we are suffering and small businesses give financial independence and education leading to democratic judgment seems impossible? This is the kind of question Gramsci broke his head on in his jail cell. In the mornings, rain or shine, as one of his jailmates said in 1987, 50 years after his death, Gramsci came down to the yard to listen and learn from the other inmates of the jail. Not all political prisoners. I'm sorry that the handout is uh, there because I didn't really, I mean, the reason I wasn't even going to give the pictures, the reason why I'm going to come back here, the reason why I gave the pictures was because uh, Gramsci, who was quite contemptuous of intellectuals as a class, which is why everyone is an intellectual, is not such a good thing to say without, in fact, I'll read what he said about intellectuals, I'll repeat it if I ever come there. He uh, said about intellectuals that intellectuals, in fact, cannot, uh, they, uh, intellectuals develop slowly. I'm quoting Gramsci, okay, in English translation. Intellectuals develop slowly, far more slowly than any other social group. This is Gramsci. To think it possible that such intellectuals, today's self-selected moral entrepreneurs, that um, such intellectuals can, as a mass, break with the entire past, and situate themselves totally upon the terrain of a new way of thinking is absurd. This is Gramsci. So what I, why, the reason why I have those pictures, one where he's, he's uh, short and hunchbacked and smiling with a horrible hat, and the other where he is um, in jail, uh, that's one of the last photographs before he's dead, is because in, in, with much goodwill, 
Raj, can you hear me over the noise of the airplane? No. With much good will, he has been turned into Mr. Head. Because, of course, his face was the face of a lion. But he has been Monsieur Test. Some of you may know that this is something that was written by a man called Paul Valéry in the last century. Uh, the, the idea that Gramsci is just a talking head, that beautiful head, that has turned him into what in this country is constantly brought up, and I think it's quite meretricious, it's like ancestor worship, role model. Role model, leadership. No, Gramsci is not Mr. Head. Gramsci belongs to everyone. What is really, that's why I have those pictures, but I didn't, I didn't want them handed out because I didn't think it was going to be the right thing. So, that, uh, forget it, okay? Those pictures are available in the exhibition. But at any rate, the reason why I put him up is that. He's not Mr. Head. So let's go back. The um, rain or shine, he came back to, he came down to the yard to listen and learn from the other inmates of the jail. Not all political prisoners. Now, for this kind of thing, to listen and learn from others, from the you of this uh, talk, which is not everyone in the audience, long-term relationships are needed. I'm a foreigner, green card holding foreigner, living and working here, college professor, non-citizen. I own, I don't have the right to interfere. I own a condo in Washington Heights, which means I'm a part of this mayor's initiatives against affordable housing, dis displacing the rent controlled folks. That makes me a class enemy. So to an extent, my right to interfere here and keep talking about what you should do is incredibly limited. The, but as a paid teacher, that's how I earn my living here in New York, not there, as a paid teacher, if nothing else, I can say with conviction that to follow Gramsci, this question, can we accept Gramsci when we are suffering and small businesses give financial independence and education leading to democratic judgment rather than jobs seems impossible and impractical. This question must be seriously asked by you over and over again. Can we accept Gramsci when we are suffering and small businesses give financial independence and education leading to democratic judgment rather than jobs seems impossible and impractical? Since democracy is for anyone, not just business leaders, Gramsci wanted to develop a world of problem solvers according to capacity and inclination, willing and able, rather than have problems solved by those in the know. Hence, democratic judgment, because we do choose people to act for us in, within the democratic structure. You would never know this from campaign rhetoric. It seems to be only about winning, like any national sport. I'll read this sentence again. Hence, democratic judgment. In this time of speed and teaching for jobs, no one can want, no poor person and very rich at the top, I know, because of this digital idealism, no one can want the right to intellectual labor. We can't want the right to make our minds work. Yet, if you look at the whole world, rather than just your neighborhood, the difference between rich and poor is dictated by this formula. And how do I know that? Because I have learned that this is one item that is accepted by the landless. I can catch them with this one, landless and illiterate. Matha Khatano? And Gotal Khatanu. This is I have to speak to them in English, in Bengali, and if I translate it into English.